Hello and welcome back everyone. I hope you're all doing well. It's been a while and a new year is coming up. So, a new tutorial sounds fitting, don't you agree? And for all of you who are new here, my name is Karin and this will be a tutorial on how to make a game in Java. A platformer game to be specific. So let's keep this intro short and let's get on with the video right away. But before that, take a second to enjoy the like and subscribe animation I spent way too much time on. But it turned out alright. It's a solid 8 out of 10. That was my not so very sneaky way of saying please like and subscribe to the channel. Alright, let's go. What is a platformer game? Maybe you heard of something called Mario? Sonic, and so on. A platforming game comes in many shapes and forms, but the basic idea is to have the player view the game from the side in a two-dimensional world. But of course, there are a lot of exceptions nowadays, but this is the basic idea. Who is this tutorial for? This is for you who want to test a new hobby, or who would like to know more about making games. Maybe you have been curious about taking classes in programming, but don't quite have the time or just not sure enough. This will be a good test without any obligations or cost. Watch and follow along for as long as you want. That way you will have more of an idea what it's all about and can therefore make a better decision. Or maybe you already want to be a game developer and need somewhere to start. I myself found tutorials like this one very useful and I would like to give back to the community. Many of those tutorials I followed, very few or if any actually finished the tutorial they were uploading. That was a bit frustrating, but that won't be the case here. This one will be completed. If you're new here, I made an identical promise for the previous tutorial and I kept that one and I will keep the same promise for this one. I will leave a link in the description below for the very first episode of that tutorial. You can check it out later. What is needed for this tutorial? This game we will make from scratch. No external engines required or any other shortcuts. We will just use the Java language to create this game. Don't get me wrong, a game engine can be a huge time saver. But I'm one of those people that like to understand what's going on behind the scene. Then, with some understanding of the basic components and concepts, one can start using a game engine to speed things up. But that is simply my opinion and my way of learning. But we do need some tools though. Two, to be exact. We need one IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment, which is just a fancy name for a code editor. We need somewhere to write the code and store it, and this is what the IDE takes care of. It's doable without an IDE and only using a text editor, but that's like playing on hard mode squared. Not recommended. And the second tool we will need since we work in Java will be the JDK. The JDK stands for Java Development Kit. This is needed since Java is run a little bit different on your computer compared to other languages such as C++. It got an extra step. And the Java Development Kit simply makes the Java code runnable. I could go into details about this, but that's outside the scope of this video, so I'll skip it for now. Both of these programs slash tools and how to install them is recorded in the first episode of the last tutorial, and I don't think we need to go over that again. Just make sure you download and install the latest Eclipse and Java development kit. I will leave a link to that video and also the timestamp for that section in the description below. Another thing that is needed is some basic coding knowledge. You don't need to be an expert or anything. If you watch some tutorials on Java on YouTube, you should be able to understand most of the basic loops, statements, variables and such. There are plenty of good ones on YouTube to check out. And if you don't find anything on YouTube, you can also check out Can Academy's Intro to JavaScript. It's not the same language, but they do cover a lot of basic stuff that we will use. And it's also object-oriented programming, which is great since we are using Java. Why should we use Java? A few reasons. Java is not too difficult to learn and use, and probably the biggest reason is that it works on more than just one type of machine. It works on Windows, Linux, Mac, phones, and so on. And building a game on that can be run on more than just one type of operating system is a good practice. As Java is known for its ability to be used on so many places, it comes with a drawback in terms of speed, as it has another step when you run the code. But that drawback is acceptable because it's very rare to ever cause an issue. We will not face any problems with this. What will you learn in this tutorial? In this tutorial, we will go over and implement some key game mechanics. Some of them will be the same as the previous tutorial, other ones will be new or improved. Some of the topics we will cover are the game window, a game loop, inputs from the player, animations, different ones for different behaviors, both the player and enemies. Line of sight, can the enemy see the player or is there any type of blocks in between? Collisions and much more. 
Where is the code and assets? For every episode, the code will be saved and can be downloaded from my website. You can also find the code on GitHub and I will leave a link in the description for that as well. Even if we are at, say, episode 7, you can download the code for episode 2. And the assets will be downloaded along with the code. Will this tutorial cost anything? No, this tutorial will be free of course. All I will ever ask for is if you like the video, subscribe and hit the like button. And if you think someone else will have use for this tutorial, share it with your friend or whoever it might be. Alright, I think it's time for us to start our first coding session. So when you start up Eclipse the first time, you have a few tabs such as donate or information and welcome screen. Close that all down till you get to a view that looks similar to this and we will begin. First we will create a project. So file, new, Java project. And here you can name it whatever you want, but I'm just going to name it Platformer Tutorial. And everything should be default here, except if you have a different version of Eclipse, you might not see this little tab down here or this little box down here. If you don't see it, then we're just going to click finish. And if you didn't see it before, you should probably have a pop-up right now that asks for that module. Don't create the module. It's not for our type of projects. It's for bigger projects. So just don't create it. And inside our platformer tutorial, we have a empty source folder. And before we add our first class in here, let's go over what classes we will create this episode and what they will be used for, because they will be our main classes throughout the project. So let's just go over quickly what they will do and what's the difference between each and every one of them. And as I mentioned, we will create four classes today. One of them will hold our main method. And this method is the very first method that Java looks for whenever we start a game or a program. And we're just going to have that in a separate class so we don't have to worry about it or care about it for the rest of our tutorial. The other class we're going to create is the game class, or rather the main class for the entire game. This is where everything is added and put together. This one is going to create our window class and our player class and all our handlers and everything. This is going to be the class that glues everything together. So that one we're going to add today. And the third class we're going to create is simply just to create our window. In a previous tutorial, we put all of this code inside the game class. But this time, let's put it in our separate class and put it aside. So that class only cares about all the code referencing the window. And the last class we're going to add today is our game screen. And this is where we're going to draw everything on. So we're going to be able to put that aside as well. And as soon as all of those classes are added and a little bit of code in each of them, we can now draw something on the screen. And once we've done that, we can call it a day. So let's begin by creating our first class. And on our source folder in our new project, we simply right click new package. And we're going to use package to structure up our code. So one package contains all of the main classes. One package may contain all our types of enemies and one for all our handlers and so on. So that's what we're going to use packages for. This one will be for our main classes. So let's just simply call it main. Simple as that and finish. And inside our main package, we create a new class called main class. And we can click this little box here to create the public static void main method that will be the only method I think inside here. So click and finish and we get this. We can remove this auto generated comment. So inside here we can do a quick check to see if we set everything up correctly. So we type system.out.println or ln. And then inside these two parentheses we can say I am alive. And up here we have four green buttons, three play buttons almost, and one bug. And we're only going to use these two, the normal play and the debug. But we're not going to get into the debug right now. We're just going to try and run the main class and see if it works. So we're just going to click it and see if we got it. And the console says, I am alive. But having the console here is pretty bad. So I'm just going to drag it down here like so. And in case you lose console, you'd simply go up to window, show view, console, or in case it's not even in here, you can go to other and say search for console and open. 
and now you have it back. But that's only one of the classes, so let's go to our main package, right click, new, class. And this will be our game class, so let's just call it game. And it's inside here, we will have pretty much everything, or rather everything will start from here. So inside here, for us to write any code, or rather be able to call any methods in here, first we will need a constructor. Public game parentheses and a bracket, or two brackets. A constructor in Java is the special class that can be considered like the head method of the class. So whenever we create an object out of this game class, we directly call any code that's inside this bracket here. We can also pass something into this class by adding variables inside the parentheses. But we're not going to pass anything in yet. We have nothing to pass in yet. We're simply going to add another system.out.println. I am alive again. Again. And we're going to say that. But inside our main class, we're going to remove this and we're going to say new game. So we're creating a new object, but we're not saving it to anything. So, but in case we wanted to use the game object again, this very object we just created, we would need to have a game game equals new game. But we're not going to need to save it as an object just yet. So let's remove that and just say new game. And that's going to be sufficient enough. So if everything's working and we can access this constructor in this game class, we should now see I am alive again. And we do. So now we can actually create the game class and we can access the code inside the constructor. Perfect. Now we can get the window going so we can actually see something rather than just boring text in the console. And as discussed before, we're going to add a class for just the window. So we're going to create a window class and we're going to call it game window and nothing else. And just click finish. And for us to be able to have a window, we're going to need to use something called JFrame. And JFrame is part of a collection of components that helps us developers create a window or rather a GUI, graphical user interface. And to get access to this JFrame and to create the window, we're going to first create a constructor, public game window. And in case I didn't mention it, the constructor name needs to match the class name. And for us to create this window, we can do it in two ways. One, we could do it as the other tutorial by extending, extends JFrame which is a option. It's the one I prefer actually. But since we did that the last time, we can actually just private JFrame, JFrame. And we need to import this class so we can work with it. And inside our constructor, we say JFrame, the one we just created right here, is equal to a new JFrame. So we create a JFrame object. And with this JFrame object now created, we can now do a few calls to make the window appear. And the first call we're going to make is to the size of the JFrame. So we need to set a size. So JFrame dot set size, and we're going to go with int width and int height. So 400 by 400, which in this case are 400 pixels wide and 400 pixels in height. And let's actually go back to our game class and remove this text right here. And let's create a game window object. So private game window, and let's just call it game window. And inside our constructor, we say game window equals new game window. And now we have a game object, which is this class. And inside our constructor in our game class, we create a game window object. So now we are inside this constructor right here. And if we run it now, since we set the size, we can check if we can see anything. Nothing happened and the program got terminated. We did set the size, but we never told it to be visible. 
and set visible is false by default, but we actually want to see it. So we're going to say true. So JFrame, show us the window. All right, save it and let's run it. Wow, we see it. We have a window 400 by 400. We can still resize it. We can still move it around. We can go full screen and minimize it. And we can close it, but it's not actually closed. If you check here, we haven't terminated it yet. So let's terminate it from the console. And that's because we never told JFrame that this window, when we cl click the close button, we want it to be terminated. So we need to make a call for that as well. So JFrame dot set default close operation. And we're going to give it a value. So JFrame dot exit on close. And this value, or rather exit on close, is simply a integer, a number, and depending on what number we pass into that method, it's gonna do something different. And there is currently four, I think, yeah. There is four options. We can do nothing, we can hide on close, we can dispose on close, and we can exit on close. And we're not gonna care about those three up here. We're just gonna care about exit on close. We wanna close the program whenever we close the window. So let's try it again. We have it here and we click close and now the program is terminated. Perfect. And in our previous tutorial, we actually had a problem whenever we run the program. Sometimes the game screen was completely blank. And if we run the game, there is nothing. There's just a white background. But as soon as we resize the window, we're calling a function called repaint. And that was because we didn't put the set visible in the correct spot. And that needs to be at the bottom. So we're just gonna move it one step down. And that's the correct spot for set visible. It should be at the bottom. And our window right now is just a blank window. Nothing's happening. It's just boring. So we need to add our fourth and last class of this episode, which will be a J panel. So let's create a new class and we can call it game panel. And in this game panel, we will need also a constructor, so public game panel, like so. Just like you might have a painting on the wall, the painting has a frame and then you have the actual picture. So the J frame is the frame and the J panel is the picture. And before we start coding in game panel, let's hold down on our game window drag it to the right till we get something like that. So we can see our game window and then our game panel on the left. So here we created a object, a J frame object as a global variable, but in our game panel, let's extend J panel to see the difference in the calls. So we need to import J panel. And just like our game window, we need to add a little bit of code inside this class but we're gonna do no code inside our constructor. We're actually going to create something called a public void paint component. And this paint component method needs a graphics G object as an argument. So we're gonna import that class. Hold up, what is going on? What is this method called pain component? And also, what is this graphic stuff that's being passed in? Well, first, let's talk about pain component. That's the magic method in JPanel that we never actually call directly. It gets called whenever we press the play button. Just like our game panel class have a constructor, so does JPanel. And in that constructor, there is some code to make sure everything runs correctly. And one of those is taking care of any drawing that we might have made. But we can only draw something if we create a method that is called pain component and it needs to be spelled correctly. But JPanel itself cannot draw. We need a graphic object for that. And just like JPanel and JFrame allows us to create a functioning window, graphics allows us to draw. We can describe graphics as a paintbrush in layman's terms. JPanel says here is where you can draw and with the graphics object, the paintbrush, 
we can now draw. There is of course ways to draw things on JFrame without the J panel, but it's trickier and there's less options available. So we'll just stick with this option. So to summarize, we need the paint component method so J panel can find it and we need to pass in a graphics object. And with this new graphics object, we can start to draw. I hope that quick explanation helped you a little. We could go deeper into how it all works, but that makes no sense since this is just a tutorial and we don't need to go any deeper. But there's actually one more thing we need to do in this method for our drawings and images and everything to actually show up and look properly. That is to call super dot paint component G. And this might look a little bit weird. You might not really have used it before, but what this line is doing is calling the super class, which is J panel, since we are extending J panel. So it calls the J panels own paint component method and tells it, Hey, do the things you need to do. Once you've done that, I can start doing my stuff in the game panel. So this simply calls the super class, do the paint component first, all of the things you need to do in that class, then I'm gonna start painting myself. And we need to have this call so that the J panel can clean the surface for us to paint our new picture. Because if we didn't call it, we could have some very weird image glitching and images from the previous frame carrying over to the new one. And yeah, so if you don't call the super class to do the pre-work before you get to game panel, we could have some weird issues. And without going into details about what the super class are doing in the paint component method, we're just gonna think of it as it's cleaning the surface and allowing us to paint again without anything carrying on from the previous frame. And now we can actually start painting something that we want. But before we can do that, we actually need to create a game panel object. So let's go to our game class where we have our game window. Let's create a private game panel, game panel. Just like that. And we're gonna create it the same way as the game window. So new game panel, like so. And now we can go back to our game panel. So let's just add a simple square. So G dot draw rect, rectangle. So draw rectangles, there is a lot of different draw calls you can look at. Some of them are the same call, but they take in different values. You can draw a polygon, oval, line, etc., etc. But we want a rectangle. So draw rect, and we need four values. Ignore these all bits aboard with height. That's just uh, that's just a bug, really, because it's looking for values. It didn't find anything, so it takes the first one it finds, and this makes no sense. First, we're gonna need an x position and a y position. Then we're gonna say it needs to be this wide and it needs to be this high. So let's start with an X position. Let's say 100 and for Y, 100 as well for simplicity. Let's make it 200 in width and let's make it 50 in height. Save it and let's run it. Nothing shows up, why is that? Well, we do have our game window which is the frame, and we have our game panel, which is our painting. But currently the J frame and the J panel are separate. They are not assembled. Just like your picture on the wall, it needs to be assembled. So we need to take the J panel and put it inside the J frame. So for us to put our game panel inside our game window, we need to add an argument inside our game window constructor. We could add a specific method for it, but Let's just add it inside our constructor. So in our constructor, we say we want a game panel and we're gonna call it game panel. And before our set visible to true, we say jframe.add. And here we add our game panel. So game panel and then finish that off. Needs to be before set visible to true. But now we have an error in our game class and that's because we haven't passed the game panel into our game window yet. So we could take our game panel and paste it like so. But that will give us an error because we have not yet initialized it here. 
we have declared it up here, but we haven't created it completely yet. So we take that one and place it above our game window. So we're creating the panel before the game window. And then we place the game panel inside our game window. And inside our game window constructor, we create the frame. We give the J frame the J panel, in this case a game panel. And then we set it to true. And if we run it now, we should see a rectangle inside our window. And we do. But this is a r drawn rectangle. Let's have a filled rectangle. So let's go to our game panel. So instead of draw rect, we say fill rect. So when we say draw rect, we mean just the lines of the rectangle. And when we say fill rectangle, we mean a completely filled rectangle. So let's run it. And now we have a black rectangle in the middle of our window. Perfect. And I think this is a great stopping point for today. We discussed how and what we can expect from this tutorial, but also this episode. We added the four classes, each have a specific role. One for keeping the main method just out of our way. One for keeping our most important class, the game class, where everything will start and take form. And one for keeping our JFrame, our game window, and of course, the last one, our game panel, where we will do our drawing on. I think I've explained the most important stuff, but if you found something that's missing or just not making any sense, let me know in the comments below. Before it's time for a well-deserved break, there will be links to a few places. There is a link to my website for downloading the project if you wish to do that. There will also be a link to GitHub if you rather go that route. And if you wish to support me, I've now made a buy me a coffee page. So if you wish to donate and support the channel, you can do so now. It's just like Patreon, but without the big fees. And if you wish to discuss anything with me or others like you, check out the Discord server. But before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. The next episode will come in a couple of days and you don't want to miss that. So until the next episode, take care now and have a wonderful day. Bye.